Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel Bytes tutorial. In the past, I've done several different tutorials on how to create dynamic print ranges on your worksheets so that if you add or remove rows from a table or a data range that you don't have to reconfigure the print area. And I will list several of those in the notes below. But recently, I got a question from a client, Logan3576, that asked, can you have multiple dynamic print ranges on the same worksheet? So that's what we're going to address today in our tutorial. But before we jump into that, please take a minute to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Make sure you hit the bell icon so you will get a notice whenever I put out a new video. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also find me at any of the social media sites you see here. So now, let's check out today's topic. So as I mentioned, I will list several of the tutorials I did on this topic below in the notes. However, just to do a quick recap without going through the whole process. So if I wanted to set up a dynamic print area so that it would only print the rows that have data in them, what I would do is I would go to the Formula tab, go to Name Manager, and create a new named range. In this case, I've created one called Mike Print. So if we take a look at that, the name is Mike Print, and the reference is an offset function that has Sheet 1, which is the name of this worksheet, and in the offset function, I'm going to use my anchor point as cell A1. I want to go down zero rows over zero columns. And then the height of my range is based on the count of column C. And then the width is 8 because I have a static number of 8 columns. And then under print area, I just set it up or I have my print area is the name and it references Mike Print. So it just references this range that I've created called Mike Print. So in this scenario, if I did a control P, you'll see it only shows that it will print the 16 rows that I have data in. If I happen to add a few rows, I'm just going to take and copy that and move it down and paste it. So now I have 21 rows. If I did a control P, notice it'll now print the 21 rows of data from my data range. But the question is, what if we have two different areas on our worksheet and they're structured somewhat differently? Well, what we would do in that case, after I expand this, you see I have another table that very similar to the first one that only has eight rows of data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this formula, which is structured the same way as the other offset formula for the first data range. But in this case, I'll use cell O1 as my anchor point and use column Q as what I will count. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight and copy that formula. I'll go to name range and I'm going to create a new named item here. I'll paste in that formula. And in this case, the name, I'm going to call it Mike Print 2. And I'll say OK. And now I have Mike Print, which references the first data range I have, and Mike Print 2, which references the second. Now, the only other thing I need to do now is go into the print area item, edit that, and where it has refers to Mike Print, I'll just put comma and say Mike Print 2. I'll say OK, and then I'll close that. So now, when I hit a Control P, notice I have two pages that are going to print here. Page 1 shows the 21 items that I have in that data range. And on page 2, it will print the other range I have, which has 8 items in it. And again, if I add more items to this second one, Control-C to copy, Control-V to paste. Now I'll hit Control-P. 
My first page again will show those 21 items. And on the second page, now it shows down to the 11 items that I have in that data range. And that's how you can do this in Excel.